Hello, my people. It's your Negro with aptitude and host of the Blackboard, Mickey Lee. We're on the last Monday of May. Well, now it's pretty much over. <laughs> And by now, most of you have had your fill of hot dogs, hamburgers, red Kool-Aid, and various fruit-flavored cakes and pies. Since I'm working out now and nobody near me had a barbecue, I skipped all that this year, but I ain't mad at you. Listen, I'm running late, and by the time you see this video, uh, Memorial Day will pretty much be over, but... Before it becomes a distant memory, I'm uploading this video to discuss certain origins of the holiday and what should be in the memory of black folks. I hope y'all ain't too full to stay awake or that it's too late to pay attention. But in any event, here we go. And before we jump into this video, I just want to welcome new subscribers Thank you so much for hanging out with us here at the Blackboard, where we share education and empowerment so that you wind up on the right side of eternity. What does Memorial Day have to do with eternity? Well, you'll have to stick around to the end of the video to find out. Here we go. While different traditions have erupted simultaneously, all sources agree that Memorial Day, originally known as Decoration Day, emerged in response to the unprecedented carnage of the Civil War. Approximately 620,000 soldiers died, of which close to 40,000 were black. Side note here, anytime you hear People say that the Civil War was fought to free black people. Just know that that is a lie. And anytime you hear people say that white people freed black people, you should also know that is a lie. Nearly 200,000 soldiers were black soldiers were enlisted in the Civil War. Now, Black military service dates all the way back to before there was a United States. The first person to die for the American Revolution, a country which still today denies black people full rights of citizenship. The first person to die in the American Revolution was a mixed race person, uh, half African and half Native American named Crispus Atkins. So, from the very beginning, we have fought not only for our own freedom, but for this nation to actually realize the promise that it tells other people it is, as well as carrying all other non-whites on our backs. In any event, approximately 620,000 soldiers died, of which close to 40,000 were black. To put this in perspective, to date, about 1.2 to 1.3 million American soldiers of all backgrounds have died in all the wars in which the United States has been involved, beginning in 1775 with the American Revolution and continuing to today with the ongoing war on terrorism. This means that about half of all the soldiers that have ever died, died in one war, the Civil War. There are ongoing disputes about where and when the first official Memorial Day celebration occurred. However, one of the first documented events to commemorate the slain soldiers of the Civil War was conducted by former slaves from Charleston, South Carolina on May 1st, 1865. This was just a few weeks after the ending of the Civil War in April, 1865. Though I must note that some sources state the war didn't end until June. In any event, this is about the first documented event to co 
commemorate the slain soldiers of the Civil War. Black Charlestonians removed approximately 257 black Union soldiers from a mass grave in a former Confederate prisoner of war camp. They worked for two weeks to reinter these soldiers in individual graves. Then they held a parade in honor of the fallen, which featured singing hymns, offering prayers, and military salutes. While the official Memorial Day was claimed three years later in 1865, this event on May 1st of 1865 I'm sorry, it was claimed three years later in 1868. This event on May 1st of 1865 was most likely the blueprint. And as we know, black folks often start things in this country for which we never get credit. Though various cities and towns have claimed to be the birthplace of the official Memorial Day organized activities, Waterloo, New York won the congressional sanction of this title on May 5th, 1866. The Waterloo, New York is called the official birthplace of the Memorial Day celebration, as we just noted, Carbondale, Illinois is credited with the first organized community-wide Memorial Day celebration. Major General John A. Logan issued Order Number 11, officially recognizing May 30th, 1868. That's three years after the May 1st, 1865 celebration by the former slaves. He officially recognized May 30th, 1868 as being for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion. Again, though these activities were already documented to have occurred three years earlier in Charleston, South Carolina, no one there apparently had the capacity or even probably thought of declaring it official. Not surprisingly, it took nearly a hundred years for most southern states to even identify with or acknowledge the official Memorial Day. And as of today, in 2021, there are still southern states who have Confederate Memorial Day or Confederate Heroes Day, or commemoration of what is called the Lost Cause. Now listen, there are some black folks who get irritated when they see the Confederate flag. There are others who get irritated when they see statues of Robert E. Lee, when they see other Confederate type statues, etc., etc. Not me. Because, number one, if people want to assign themselves or align themselves with the losing side, then let them. Number two, if your eye is fixed on heaven, if your eye is fixed on Jesus, if your eye is fixed on eternity, then these people are doing you a favor because they are letting you know what spirit drives them. So why should you get upset? That in 2021, there are people who are still holding on to the losing side. By the way, they're not just in the South. Also, just like the Jews would never let Auschwitz be raised or burned down or burnt to the ground or removed because they want it as a reminder for posterity about what happened to them. And there are native tribes in the United States and throughout the Americas who have fought to maintain certain um, uh, historical sites as a, as a reminder, not only to their own people, but to commemorate what happened to them. And so it will never be forgotten by anyone else. That is the same attitude that we should be taking as well. 
by going around and knocking down Confederate flags and getting upset every time you see a Confederate statue or something of this nature, you are stating that you don't understand you are the winner. You are also stating that you are easily emotionally manipulated by things such as a flag. It is time for us to get our vision where it should be, which is not on this earth at all. So, if there are folks in the South or anywhere else that want to align themselves with the lost cause, have at it. You're just telling me you're still lost. Though initially intended to celebrate the Civil War slain and veterans uh, military ve veterans to that date specifically the holiday the memorial holiday has evolved to commemorate all slain soldiers and veterans of all the conflicts in which American soldiers have fought this became a particular focus after World War II now it is important to note here that though black men and women formerly enslaved as well as free, have fought in every single war of the United States, every single conflict, both on American soil and abroad. That has not bought us the citizenship and the level of respect that it is due. I believe our focus needs to shift to another war, and I'll get to that in just a moment. It is customary for the sitting American president to commemorate Memorial Day from Arlington National Cemetery in Arlington, Virginia. Did you know that the site of Arlington National Cemetery is the former plantation of Confederate General Robert E. Lee? He was related to the first American president, George Washington, through marriage. Robert E. Lee's wife, Mary Custis Lee, was the daughter of George Washington Park Custis, the grandson of Martha Washington, herself the wife of George Washington. Battle for control of this property began during the Civil War and didn't end until 1882 with the formal founding of Arlington National Cemetery. Though never promoted or even compensated at the rate of their white counterparts, by the way, this includes the so-called Latino today, black or ADOS soldiers were able to leverage military service into a foothold of economic, though not social, security. Furthermore, during World War II in particular, Black soldiers would lay the groundwork for the modern integrated military so many non-black soldiers take for granted today. Many of the leaders of the civil rights movement of the 1960s were former servicemen. Even today, many Americans, including ADOS or foundational black Americans, are wholly ignorant to the humongous and unmatched debt black folks have paid for the liberation of the United States. This is not exclusive to our military service, though millions upon millions upon millions of black men and women have fought to unite those who reside in the 50 states. The enlisted included 1.2 million black soldiers in World War II alone. Despite these sacrifices, every level of American society seems committed to ensuring we are a permanent underclass. Unfortunately, we have a growing number of very loud voices, ignorant of our history and our present, who are enabling our position on the bottom shelf to remain a reality for too many. As I close this video, I want to say a very heartfelt thank you to all of the black servicemen and women, beginning with both of my parents who served in the Navy.
Various cousins who served in the Marines, uncles who served in the Army, and other family members I may never know of. And I want to encourage us to consider the most important fight left before us. In my view, this is reclaiming our dignity, our purpose, and our people. If you recall, at the very beginning of this video, I stated that even Memorial Day has something to do with eternity. And what is that? Well, we must do this by remembering that we are in a temporal space. We, among all peoples of the earth, have been chosen by God to do the heavy lifting and to do what no man, no group of people have ever been able to do. Now, I'm not particularly happy <laughs> that we were chosen for this, but it's kind of like being a refrigerator, a computer, or a table. You don't really get to have much say in how you're used. But I can tell you this, if you, we continue to look to the people of this country to give us the appreciation we deserve, it ain't coming. Despite all the BLM rhetoric, and I pre appreciate the sincere sentiments that are now coming from many other groups of people, in particular whites, but I'm looking for tangibles, the same as the immigrants, Native Americans, the alphabet soup crowd, and yes, the biggest minority of all white women have gotten. Until then, all of the rest of it is just lip service, and I'm over the t-shirt and the lawn signs. So the biggest fight before us remains eternity. We must return to the God who made us before it's too late. He has chosen us and now it's time for us to once again choose him. This is your Negro with aptitude and host of the Blackboard, Mickey Lee, signing off. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments section if you learned anything new in this video that you didn't know about the origins of Memorial Day.